Hey there YouTube. Before we get into the video, just wanted to let you know that this is a paid node which you can get down below on my Gumroad page. It's not something that you're going to be able to find in Substance Designer by default. And I just wanted to get that out of the way because I know some people are going to watch this whole video and get mad at me in the comments below. So trying to do my due diligence. Now let's get to the video. So once we've gone ahead and downloaded Plant Press, the first thing we're going to want to do is tell Substance Designer where to actually look for this node. So if you're familiar with actually getting these nodes into your library, you can go ahead and skip to a later part. But if this is your first time or you're not very comfortable with actually getting these nodes into Designer, this is how we're going to do it. Make sure that you put the SBS AR file in a folder that is uh, relatively safe. So you're not going to be moving it anywhere because we're going to point Substance Designer to this specific file path. So we can see that I've saved mine in my terabyte storage under a My Tools and SBS AR folder. So once you've done the same, come into Substance Designer and go up to Edit and Preferences. And yours might look a little bit different than mine. Mine's a little bit older uh, version of Substance Designer, but we're gonna go and look for projects. And so once that opens up, we're gonna wanna come down and find where it says library, because we're going to be, again, directing Designer to a folder to add some nodes to our library. So we can take a look down where we have this paths added notation. And we're going to want to go and add another file path. So I'm going to click this little plus button here. And from here, we're going to want to navigate to that file path. So let's go ahead and select that folder. And you can see now we're going to have this file path, which is going to lead us right there. So let's go ahead and make sure that we hit apply first, because if we go ahead and just hit OK, we're not going to be able to actually find it. So let's go and apply that and hit OK. So now in my graph here, let's take a look and start to type in plant press. And we can see that now we're going to be able to actually search for this in our library here. And the same thing over here, if I go ahead and start to type in chunk, you can see that we're going to be able to search this up. Now that we have plant press into our library, let's take a look at some of the functionality that it offers us. So I've gone ahead and created a couple different card atlas pieces here, which we're going to want to composite together. And they all have their own individual material channels, which we're going to want to manipulate all at the same time. So taking a look at plant press here, we can see that we have a couple different major headers, which then drop down into more specific functionality. So the first one is going to be channels. And by default, pretty much all of them are going to be enabled other than the leaf mask channel. And the leaf mask is a little bit specific to the project that you might be working on. So that's why it's going to be disabled by default. Now we're going to notice that plant press only has one material group enabled by default, which is only going to let us plug in one card piece at a time. But obviously we're going to want to atlas a couple more pieces than just one, right? So with plant press, let's go and open up our cards header here. And this is where we can control all of the card specific functionality. So I'm going to bring our card amount up to four here, and that's going to open up three more slots for us, which we can quickly go and plug in. And they're all going to be input into our Atlas here. And again, if we take a look at the material outputs, right? they should be properly uh, positioning themselves and updating accordingly to our source content. So now that we have these all together, how do we actually start manipulating them into an atlas? Well, you'll notice that if we take a look in our 2D view here, we're going to have this transformation 2D GUI. And if you've used Substance for any amount of time, you're going to be familiar with these control points. So I can go and very easily start to uh, move things around. I can scale them down. I can even rotate it if I want to. It's really up to you how you want to go about slicing up this atlas. However, we'll notice very quickly that it's only going to give us a GUI for one of the cards and not the rest of them. And unfortunately, as far as I know, this is just a circumstance of working with the transformation and offset functionality of the transformation 2D nodes. So in order to come and actually start manipulating these, 
we have to go into the specific cards and go to edit in 2D view. So now I can start editing card number two, scaling that down and moving it over. Same thing for card number three. Again, coming in here and editing in 2D view. And so you get the idea that you're gonna to have to do this for each individual card, but still the process is relatively quick. So very easily that's been working with our cards. And if we take a look, we can see that each of the channels are going to be updated respectively for each one of our card pieces here. However, we'll notice that I've done a very poor job of optimizing our texture space here because I've crammed everything over to the left side of the atlas. And the reason I've done that is that plant press is going to allow us to actually input a bark material and append that to our atlas here very seamlessly and pretty fast. So taking a look at the node again, our next header is going to be bark, which is disabled by default. And now if you don't plan on actually using bark in your atlas, I would recommend that you do leave this on disabled because as we'll see, it does have a relatively high performance impact, more specifically if you're working in the kind of 4K range. So once I go and enable this, you can see that uh, we've jumped up a little bit in our performance here, but not too much. Again, we're working in 1K. But now we have a couple different sliders and we have a couple different uh, input sockets here. So I'm going to go down and grab a high link bark texture that I have here and bring that in. And if we take a look back, now we can see that it's appended it to our texture sheet. But even still, uh, there is a lot of unoptimized space here. So what the first slider in our bark header is going to allow us to do is actually change and alter that bark strip size. So as I bring this up, we can see it's going to get closer to the left side there, bringing it down, obviously the opposite direction. And you can think of this slider as a percentage from 0 to 100%. So 0 0.5 being around 50%. And that's gonna be pretty good coverage for our texture sheet. Now you'll notice, hopefully, I'll have to zoom in here a little bit, that on the left side here, it's looking a little bit different as we are scrubbing through our bark strip size. So if I bring this down, you can see that uh, the pixels there actually are kind of maintaining a consistent area or strip of our bark. And that's so that regardless of the size, of your bark here, it will be able to tile seamlessly horizontally here. And again, it's also going to tile vertically as well if we take a look. So you shouldn't have to worry about um, any tiling or seam issues with this particular bark. You can just simply input it, change the bark strip size, and it should tile appropriately. Now we'll also see that we can play around a little bit with that blend distance here. We can give it a little bit of warp, which might be a little tough to see. And we can change the warp disorder just in case you don't like uh, kind of the initial spread of it. However, the fun doesn't stop there. If we take a look at this transformation header, again, going and editing in 2D view, what I'm going to be able to do is actually move this bark strip around. So say you had a more specific area for your bark that you wanted to highlight. You're free to go and move this around. You can go and scale it however you like. And you're also able to, not that I would overly recommend it because you might get some kind of weirdness, but you can actually go and rotate it as well. So really it's up to you how you want to slice this bark and include it into your atlas. And again, just like our cards here, all of the channels are going to be updated simultaneously so that we don't really have to worry about blending this all back together, the node is just going to do it itself and we just have to art direct and optimize the layout of our textures here. Now I did want to note as well, just because we are looking at the normal map, that as we go ahead and rotate the asset pieces for both our bark and our leaves here, you'll see that the normal map is actually going to update based on the correct normal orientation. So you don't have to worry about getting any weird goofy normals. Um, if you're rotating any of these pieces. And again, it's going to work for our cards. If we just take a look here, we can see that the normals are going to update.
And now the final header that I want to draw your attention to is going to be padding. So with padding, right, we're going to be able to dilate our pixels pretty much on the fly as we want, but it's going to be disabled by default because this does impact performance a little bit. So once that's enabled, we'll see that we're going to get some ghosting for our cards and I'll just turn off our transparency there. And we're going to get some of that dilation coming out in pretty much all of our extra channels here. That's going to be pretty cool. However, we don't have to worry about two things. One, we won't have to worry about the actual dilation overlapping any other card assets, and we're not going to have to worry about it overlapping any of our bark. So that's going to be taken care of under the hood for us, so we are free to go ahead and really crank up our padding to whatever we want if we want to fill the space, but everything is going to maintain the proper sorting order. Now, say that you're working in 4K and you find that a full resolution padding is just too performance heavy. What we're also going to be able to do is actually down res the padding itself so that while you're working, you can go ahead and see what the padding is going to look like while also getting a little bit of a performance increase. So with the sampling resolution, we have the ability to go all the way down to an eighth of the resolution that you're working in. So if we take a look here, you can see that it's going to be pretty bad resolution, but it has improved our actual performance hit down here. So again, that's just another tool which you can use to really help speed things up. Now, in your time with Plant Press, you'll notice that I've capped the limit of cards to be four per node. And oftentimes you're going to want to actually atlas more than just four pieces together. But I'll show you very quickly how you can get around that by using more plant press nodes together in combination with each other to get the exact same result. So here I've gone ahead and more properly laid out my card atlas here and say I've got four more that I want to go and piece together. So I've gone and used two different plant press nodes here and I can actually use the outputs of these in another plant press node to combine together to create an even more complex atlas. So let's go and add another plant press node using two cards here. And let's just drag both of these in. And very quickly using our transformations here, I'll go ahead and just squeeze some things in. And again, for this particular instance, I want to go ahead and use a bark material. Now I'd recommend that if you're going to include a bark material, only do it on the final kind of blend or combination of your atlases. Otherwise you're going to get some weird kind of barks in your atlases and it's just going to look a little weird. So let's go ahead and include a bark strip, grab our bark material, and very quickly go and just update the strip size to maximize some of our space. And so hopefully now we can see that working with plant press is going to enable us to create atlases very quickly and hopefully relatively painlessly. So that is going to be plant press version one point whatever the heck it is. I still got to figure out this versioning semantics thing. Hopefully it was enjoyable and at least useful in your work or whatever you want to use it for. I'm open to comments, questions, concerns, or even suggestions for things you'd want to see either in this node or maybe a different one. So please leave all of that down below in the comments and let's get some conversations going. Thanks again for your time and all the best to you.